Pastor Kevin McGinnis. I hope your week is off to a powerful start. I love each and every one of you. Thank you for joining me tonight. It's going to be an incredible night together. I'm going to ask all of you as you're coming in right now, share this live broadcast. I tell people this every time. I have the privilege to share the word of God because I really my heart is to reach as many people as we can with the word of God. So everybody in the studio tonight, those of you online, let's start by giving God praise together. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We bless your name, Jesus. We thank you for this night. We thank you for this opportunity. Lord, I pray that people's hearts would be open to not only hear but receive what I'm saying tonight by the Spirit of God. I thank you that your word is powerful. It's quick. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. Thank you. Your word cannot return void. Lord, I'm asking you tonight to heal, to deliver, and to set free by your mighty power. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. We give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, welcome to Empower Live. I'm Pastor Kevin McGinnis. If you're new to our ministry, maybe you've never been exposed to the Word of God or you've never heard us uh, share the Word of God before, I'm going to ask you right now to let us know. Let us know where you're watching from because we, want, we love to give people a shout out and also to encourage you to continue. Make sure that you share the broadcast when you come on and be sure to subscribe to Kevin McGinnis, Pastor Kevin McGinnis YouTube channel. We're reaching people every week, every single week. I'm overjoyed, excited, pumped to tell you every week people are being saved through our ministry. And I'm glad that I have people that have caught the vision at Jesus as Lord. And those of you that are connected, wherever you're watching from tonight, helping us reach people for eternity, for the glory of God. Every one of you that are coming in right now, if everyone in this room and everyone watching would hit that share button, we're going to see a lot more people touch tonight, and that's what this is all about. Good to see all of you coming in right now. Glenn, God bless you. Thank you for joining us on Instagram. All of you, as you're coming in, be sure to share the live broadcast tonight. It's going to be awesome, and I can't wait to dive deep right into the Word of God. I'm going to be sharing tonight um, from the book of Chronicles, 2 Chronicles 7.14. 2 Chronicles 7.14. I'm just going to give another 60 seconds for people to jump on. God bless you again. Thank you for joining us tonight. Amen. Facebook fam, Instagram fam, YouTube. Be sure all of you that are coming in, subscribe to Jesus is Lord Church YouTube channel and also Pastor Kevin McGinnis. Amen. I'm excited about this word tonight. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Good to see all of you. Thank you for jumping on. Amen. Now, if you have any prayer requests, I want to pray for you. That's why we're here, not just to share the word of God, but to join our faith with you, to believe for a miracle in your life. Maybe you need healing in your home, healing in your marriage, healing in your body, healing in your finances, a breakthrough in a situation. That's why we're all here tonight. That's why I asked my church family right after a prayer meeting to stay because I believe something happens when the people of God come together in the spirit of faith and agreement. There's power in agreement. Amen. I don't need just people to come and just sit in a chair, but I, I, I really expect people to come and join their faith. I believe that something happens when we come together in one mind, in one accord, in agreement. Amen. So again, thank you. Thank you for joining me on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Let's get into the Word of God tonight. I'm talking tonight from the subject, Make America Pray Again. Can we say that together? Make America Pray Again. In 2 Chronicles 7, 14, it says this, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, God said, he says, then I'll hear from heaven, I'll forgive their sin, and I'll heal the land. And then Proverbs 14, 34 is another powerful verse. It says, righteousness, say that together, righteousness exalts a nation, but sin condemns any people. I pray every one of you that are joining me right now, that I pray that every one of you are voting for people that are as close to the Bible as you can get. I pray that every one of you that are going to be voting this week are going to be voting for people that exemplify and represent the Word of God. Amen. It's so important. I love what Billy Graham said. Billy Graham said something that was amazing. He says, to get nations back on their feet, we must first get down on our knees. Are you listening to me? Let me say that again. Billy Graham said, to get nations back on their feet, we must first get down on our knees. 
Martin Luther said something that was life transforming. He says, to be a Christian without prayer is not no more possible than to be alive without breathing. Did you hear that? To be a Christian without prayer is no more possible than to be alive without breathing. Are you ready for the word tonight? Right now, if you realize it or not, maybe you do, maybe you don't, America is in the greatest moral and spiritual crisis in the history of our nation. American Marxism, which is communism. I want you to hear me carefully. That Karl Marx, communism and Marxism are the same. It is literally a raging cancer destroying our schools, our colleges, our universities. Come on, somebody. Most media today that you'll tune into or watch on social media, most media today is more lies than truth. That's why, to be honest with you, I don't really watch the news anymore. Once in, a while, once in a while I may catch it or I may see a flash on something that come on social media, but I don't watch the news anymore because what I understand is most media today is lies. Socialism is running rampant in America. Socialism is really communism. Socialism will try to shut down our churches in the coming years in America. Our children in public schools are being taught the critical race theory, which teaches your children that America's laws, our institutions, our values, our traditions, our languages is racist and therefore must be destroyed. Are you listening to me? How did we get from the founding fathers building America with prayer to a nation where principles of communism are now being taught in our colleges and in our universities and in our public schools. To those of you who have children in public schools, I need you to listen to me. I need every parent that's watching, every grandparent that's watching and listening to me right now. If you have children or grandchildren right now that are going or attending public schools, listen to me. The members of the school board are public servants. They are not educational dictators. Your children do not belong to the school board. Your children belong to you. You need to wake up, parents. Most parents that I know, even parents in my church, have no clue what's going on. We need to wake up and you need to get involved as a parent. What is America's answer? The answer is recorded in 2 Chronicles 7.14. This is America's answer. Say that together. This is America's answer. The word of God is America's answer. The church is America's answer. Prayer is America's answer. The word of God declares, if my people... This is the answer. Who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. God said, then I'll hear your prayer from heaven. I'll forgive your sin and then healing can come to the land. Are you listening to me? How many of you will admit and agree with me tonight that our land needs major healing? How many of you online? Amen. Scott, good to see you on. Franco, good to see you on. How many of you will admit tonight and you agree with me that America is in desperate need of healing. Can I get a witness from somebody? Now I want you to listen. I want you to look at this text closely because 2 Chronicles 7:14 is a conditional promise or a conditional revelation. What does that mean? That if you do this, God said, if you pray, God said, I'll do that. Just like Deuteronomy 28 says, all these blessings will come on you and overtake you if you listen and obey my commands, my statutes, walk in my ordinances. Second Chronicles 7.14 is a, everybody say, it is a conditional promise. He said, if my people, if the church will pray, if you seek my face, if you turn from your wicked ways, if you believe, if you can believe with God that all things are possible, then he says, then I'll hear from heaven, I'll forgive your sin, and I'll heal the lamb. That it continues on, Jesus speaking in Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. He said, if any man or woman will come after me, let them deny themselves and follow me. 
You don't hear this being preached today in the modern church because people have become so self-absorbed in their situation and their need. All they're concerned about is their own life and family. But that is not a disciple of Christ. That is not a Christian. Matthew 18, 19 tells us that if two of you shall agree on anything that, that, that God will bring it to pass. In Matthew 21, 21, it says, if you have faith and doubt not. Say that with me. If I have faith and doubt not. He said, you shall say to this mountain, art good to see you on. And you, that mountain will be removed and cast into the sea, and it will be done. Everybody shout, it shall be done. If you doubt not and believe God, what you speak will happen. America's answer is powerful prayer. Powerful prayer is America's answer. Powerful prayer that binds the demonic forces of darkness. Come on, somebody. That are now destroying our nation. People of God, every Christian in this room, you call yourself a Christian, listen up. It's time for you to get your head out of the sand. It's time to pay attention and wake up to what God has called the church to accomplish in the hour in which we live. It begins, prayer begins, revival begins with the people of God, in the house of God, praying to the living God, the God of our nation. Come on, somebody. America's answer for our founding fathers, the Bible says, blessed. Everybody say blessed. Everybody together, shout blessed. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Every nation that forsakes God or forgets God, the Bible says, will be turned into hell. America as a whole today has forgotten the God of the Bible. We would have never have dreamt things that are happening today with gender confusion and teaching children. Young boys, if you want to become a girl, go ahead, have a sex change or whatever you want to do. Young girls, you want to become a boy, boys want to become girls. Whatever makes you feel good, whatever makes you happy, just do it. It opposes the principles of the word of God. It is an abomination in the eyes of God. Homosexuality, lesbianism, perverse living is an abomination in the eyes of God. America began with pilgrims who landed at Plymouth Colony in Massachusetts in 1620, who came to America to found a nation based on the word of God. Everybody say, America was founded on biblical principles. Listen, it's not open to your debate. It is a fact in history. The Mayflower Compact. It, it, in fact, a covenant it was between those people and God. And it reads this way, and I quote, We solemnly, in the presence of God, covenant to bind ourselves together for the advancement of the Christian faith, end of quote. That's very clear. They formed a society built on the New Testament. They made a covenant based on the New Testament. The words of our founding fathers were taken directly from your Bible. That the principles of righteousness were the principles upon which this nation was founded. The reality of America be, be, being a Christian nation, it prevailed as a Christian nation. It, it was a Christian nation primarily. It prevailed as a nation, a Christian nation, until the 1960s. When in the 1960s, stay with me tonight, you're going to learn something. It was common in the 1960s for school days, sporting events, public events, whatever, to open with prayer. The Ten Commandments were posted on public buildings, in courtrooms, in classrooms, on the grounds of state capitals. Somebody say amen. The nation was shocked when the Supreme Court in 1962 ruled that prayer and Bible readings in public schools were now forbidden and could not happen. How did this happen, you ask? It happened because in the 40s, everybody say in the 40s, an organization called the ACLU, are you with me? which was founded by a communist for the purpose of destroying our constitutional freedoms. Are you with me? Yeah. 
They finally got it done through courts. God was kicked out of our schools. God was kicked out of our educational system. When I was a kid, Pepe, we proudly stood in school in honor of the flag of the United States of America and every day gave the Pledge of Allegiance. Are you with me? Today, that's illegal. Are you with me? Today, you have absolute idiots in the streets burning our flags. Professional athletes who are millionaires refuse to honor honor our nation and honor our flag. Hollywood movie stars that you spend money to go watch stupidly in movie theaters, these stars mock our patriotism and anyone who believes patriotism, anarchists are wiping their feet on our streets. They're wiping their feet on the flag of the United States of America. Are you listening to me? They should not be celebrated. They should be arrested. If you don't love this land of the free, if you don't love to live in the land of the brave, there are planes that are living, leaving our nation every hour. Why don't you catch one of those flights? Why don't you get on one of those flights? Come on, somebody. We won't miss you. We don't need you. America's future is at stake. America's future, our children, in our churches, our schools, our universities are literally hanging in the balance right now. How are we going to win this fight? Can somebody tell me? Everybody say prayer. prayer. America's answer is prayer. Say that with me. America's answer is prayer. I believe that God is forcing people, yes, back to prayer. He's allowing situations to arise that people understand there's no other solution. There's no other remedy but prayer. I'm not talking about a powerless gathering in Washington. I'm talking about prayer warfare. Are you with me? Against powers, against principalities in the heavens. The Bible says, the Bible says what you bind on earth. Say that with me. What I bind on earth is bound in heaven. And what I loose on earth is loosed in heaven. Do you understand how powerful that is? Paul said something. Fight the good fight of faith. Put on the whole armor of God. Somebody shout amen. amen. And he says, go after the prince of darkness. You have power with God through prayer. You and I have power, mighty power with God through prayer. The purpose of prayer is not to give direction to God. The purpose of prayer is to get direction from God. Jesus did not teach his disciples how to preach. Jesus taught his disciples how to pray, and they turned the world upside down. Can you say amen? amen. Somebody shout amen. amen. They came to Jesus, and they said, Lord, teach us how to pray. Why? Because when Jesus prayed, life-transforming miracles happened. When Jesus prayed, Lazarus that was dead came back to life again. When Jesus prayed, thousands were fed with five loaves and two fish. When Jesus prayed, miracles happened. Can you say amen? amen. Prayer can shake this nation. Prayer can shake Washington, D.C. Every Christian that's watching me tonight, Jordan, good to see you on. Stop whining about the attacks on your life by the devil. It's time for you to arise and attack Satan. It's time for you to attack him. It's time for you to bind him. It's time for you to crush him. It's time for you and the church of Jesus Christ to rise up in power and put our feet on the devil's head for he is defeated. Somebody give God praise and no weapon formed against us shall be able to prosper. Somebody give the Lord praise right now. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Miracles happen when we pray. How can America be saved from political and moral corruption? How can we be saved from the corruption of socialism, racism, materialism, and fake grace message? Counterfeit Christianity. What is counterfeit Christianity? It's teaching people how to adjust their sin rather than repent and turn away from their sin. Hear me, if you don't confess and turn away and forsake sin, you're still lost even if you go to church. That's counterfeit Christianity. 
saying you love God but never changing. I'm tired of people telling me how much they love God. Are you living for him? Are you serving him? Is he your master? Or is he somebody who just fit in to your schedule? How are we going to stop satanic infiltration, indoctrination? Our children, those of you that have kids in the public school system, I know you don't want to face this, but that's okay. I'm here to help you tonight. Your kids are being indoctrinated in the public school system. Indoctrinated by perversion. Indoctrinated by this gender insanity. One word can change everything. Prayer. Isaiah 45, 11, God speaks through the prophet Isaiah. And he says something that's awesome. You want to know what he said? Command ye me. God spoke through the prophet to command me. Command ye me. Say that with me. Command ye me. America's answer is, going, is found in spiritual warfare. Most Christians that I know, I have to be honest tonight. I'm always honest, but tonight I'm going to be brutally honest. Most Christians I know, many in my church, know nothing about the principles of spiritual warfare. They know how to pray, meditational prayer. I'm talking about spiritual warfare. Paul writes about it in Ephesians chapter number 6. He said, finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the whole armor of God. Benita, good to see you on. Carolyn, good to see you on. Good to see all of you joining me tonight. Thank you. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand. That word stand relates, it translates, it really translates into the word fight. Everybody shout fight. If you study it out, that word means fight. That you may be able to stand or fight against the devil schemes. Now listen to verse 12. Everybody still with me? Everybody good? For we wrestle not. Everybody say we wrestle not. We wrestle not against what? Flesh and blood. But that means, what does that mean? Other people. Our battle is not with flesh and blood. Our battle is not with your neighbor, your haters, those that don't celebrate you, but against rulers, against authorities, against forces in heavenly places. Are you with me? Say amen. amen. Now that verse is a, a mystery. It is a mystery to most of us, to most people. There are three heavens in the Bible. Say that with me. There are three heavens in the Bible. Does everybody know there's three heavens? If you do, can I see your hand? If you don't, you need to study it. The first heaven is the one that you see with your natural eye, with the sun, the moon, the stars. The second is where Satan has his throne, where he is the commander of powers and principalities that rule over different nations or countries. And under those powers and principalities on the earth are demon forces. Everybody say demonic forces. And the forces that they obey, their commander, from the second heaven. In the third heaven, I just shared with you too, the third heaven, which is called paradise. Say that with me, paradise. That is where God the Father has his throne. Jesus stands at his right hand. My God, I love this. And when you die, that's where you're going to go. That's where I'm going to go. If you're a Christian, if you've accepted Christ as your Savior and Lord, I hear people talk all the time, well, this one's in heaven. And I say to myself, these people have been in my church 30, 40 years. And they're, they're, not everybody's going to heaven, people. Only those that have accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. Just because you claim to be a religious person and you love God does not mean you're going to heaven. Somebody say amen. amen. Paul is saying to the church, even today as I echo Paul's words, we are in a battle with Satan. He's highly organized. Now, don't be confused. Don't get it twisted. He is a very highly organized kingdom with powers and principalities and that rule over kingdom, rule over nations, cities of the world, while the demons on the ground control people. Are you listening to me? Amen. 
And if you're in the occult, if you're involved in satanic rituals or activity, Satan worship, let me tell you something. You are walking into the devil's bedroom. It will destroy your life. It will destroy your future. It will destroy your family. Get away from the occult. Stay away from it. Don't play with tarot cards. Don't get involved with fortune telling, palm readers. It's demonic. How many people deny Satan has a kingdom? Most. But Jesus taught in Matthew chapter number 12, verse 26. If Satan drives out Satan, pay attention, he is divided against himself. How then, his, how then can his kingdom stand? The Bible clearly teaches Jesus has a kingdom. Are you ready? Everybody learning tonight, say amen. The kingdom, that kingdom is not divided. That kingdom is supposed to be united. So the devil is trying to divide the kingdom because he knows that he knows that if he could divide the church, he could cease the church from moving forward, causing destruction and damage to the kingdom of darkness. That kingdom, our kingdom that we live in as believers, the kingdom of God, that kingdom is under his leadership. And that kingdom is highly organized. There are two kingdoms. The kingdom of light, one led by Jesus Christ, your personal Lord and Savior, who is the light of the world. The other is the, of the kingdom of darkness. You're either in the kingdom of light or you're in the kingdom of darkness. I'm trying to tell people this every week, but they're not getting it. You cannot live in both kingdoms. You cannot serve God on Sunday and live like hell the rest of the week. You're either serving God or you're, you're serving the devil. You're either sold out to Jesus or you're sold out to Satan. You can't serve God and the devil. The kingdom of darkness is led by the prince of darkness, which is Satan himself. The question that every one of you that I want to ask you is this. Which kingdom are you in? Because everyone, every one of us are in one of those kingdoms. What kingdom are you in? What kingdom is everybody in this room in? On Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, what kingdom are you living in? I'm living in the kingdom of God. I'm a part of the kingdom of God. I'm a part of the greatest kingdom in all the world. Somebody shout aloud, hallelujah. Give God praise if you're in the kingdom of almighty God. Now listen to Daniel. Daniel, as Daniel was praying and as he was waiting for a prophetic revelation from God, he has received a revelation. And this is amazing. This is amazing. It's so incredible. He's asking God to send Gabriel to him to translate what's going on as he was praying. Daniel is in is the prince of prophets. He's the only prophet that God showed the beginning to the end of the world. Daniel is praying for the message, this message from heaven, but there was a hindrance. The devil, obviously the devil is between heaven and earth. He does not want Daniel to receive this message. It's described in the scripture, the angel Gabriel appeared to Daniel. And it says in Daniel chapter 10, it says, Daniel Daniel, we've heard. After he prayed, it says God answered. The angel answered. Daniel, we, we heard your prayer in heaven. Everybody say 21 days ago. But we were, we were intercepted. We were hindered in the second heaven by the prince of Persia. Does everybody know what Persia is today? Everybody say, how many of you know what it is? That is the prince that's over Persia. What do we call Persia today? Everybody say, Iran. Iran is Persia. Are you with me? Your prayers, hallelujah, glory to God, glory to God. The angel said, Daniel, your prayers made victory possible. Because of your prayers, Daniel, I'm about to jump over this desk. Because of your prayers, I was able to come through that, through that fight, and I'm now standing here, Daniel, in your presence. Hear me, what we do on earth in prayer determines what God can do in heaven. Somebody give God praise right now. What we do on earth determines determines what God does in heaven. What we do in prayer on earth determines how God moves for us in heaven. Isn't that, isn't that what it said? Whatever you bind on earth, God says, I bind it in heaven. Somebody give God a shout of victory. You got to pray things through. Somebody said, well, I prayed about it. I could tell by their tone they didn't. You didn't pray about it. You pray until you break through. Somebody said, Pastor, there's resistance. I need a breakthrough. You keep hitting the wall in prayer until it breaks. 
You keep hitting the wall until it breaks. You keep praying, and you pray, and you pray, and you pray. Somebody say amen. You got to learn to pray through it before it becomes a reality in your life. So how does God teach us? Everybody good? Everybody good online? You good? You good? Good to see all of you. God teaches us how to destroy satanic forces in the heavenlies. The Bible says in Matthew 18, again, here it is. Are you ready? How many of you love the word? Whatever you bind, not the pastor, whatever you bind as a believer. Not the evangelist, not the apostle, not the preacher, not the pastor, not the teacher, not the elder. Whatever you bind as a believer. Everybody with me? Whatever you bind on this earth, God said, shall be it bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. One translation is awesome. I shared on it three weeks ago on Empowered. Whatever you declare, whatever you unlock on earth, God unlocks in heaven. It's power, powerful, the binding and loosening. The point is the action, the action in heaven is governed by our response and our action on earth. All that contradicts God's will in your life needs to be bound. Whatever, every one of us in this room, I'm, I'm, I'm transparent, every one of us have things in our life that are opposing God's will. It has to be bound. You've got to take authority over it. If you don't take authority over it, it will take you out. And all that agrees with God's will needs to be loosed. All that agrees with God's will needs to be loosed. Now watch this. I've heard people say over the years, I just want to know the will of God. Well, the will and the word of God are in this book. The will and the word of God, the will of God is in the word of God. Somebody said, what is God's will? It's in the word. You got to read the word to know his will. The word of God and the will of God are always the same. Are you with me? If your will is not in alignment with this book, you're out of the will of God. Did you catch that? If your will is not in alignment with God's will, his word, you're out of the will of God. It's just that simple. Well, pastor, my children are in the permissive will. There's no such thing as the permissive will of God. You're either in the will of God or you're outside the will of God. Don't create your own false doctrine. Just like there's no hell. I hear preachers today, literally, there's no hell. Everybody's going to heaven. Everybody's not going to heaven. That is a mockery of the cross of Jesus Christ. Because the greatest sacrifice that was ever made was for our sins by our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And to believe anything or preach anything is to cheapen that sacrifice. Somebody say amen. amen. The psalmist said, it's, thy word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Somebody give the Lord praise. I'm almost done. I'm about to pray for people. The church in America, if you've not sent me your prayer request, you could do so right now. Prayer at JILC.org. Send a prayer request. You need healing. Send a prayer request. Need a breakthrough. Send a prayer request. Need deliverance. Send a prayer request. Somebody sick, send a prayer request. Amen, Danielle. The church in America has no concept of the awesome power that's available to all of us as God's people to accomplish his divine purpose. The prayer of agreement or unified prayer of the righteous when they go into the dimension of spiritual warfare if we can get this, if we can get this, there is nothing on earth that we cannot accomplish. There is nothing on earth that we cannot accomplish. Now, I'm going to share something with you. Ready? Let me share with you the three dimensions of prayer. Are you ready? Some of you need to write this down. Or you need to go and watch this again because you're not going to be able to retain all of this. The first dimension of prayer is thanksgiving. Say that with me. Thanksgiving. Then the second dimension of prayer is praise. Thanksgiving, the first dimension. The second dimension is praise. And the third dimension of prayer is spiritual or warfare. Thanksgiving and praise are devotional prayers. And they're important. 
and they have power. Psalm 104 said this. David writes, getting into the presence of God. He writes it like to access the presence of God is like going to visit a king. He said the way you get into the gates of the compound of the kingdom where the king lives is by thanksgiving. Be thankful unto him. Be thankful unto him. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Say that with me. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Don't go to God. Lisa, good to see you on. Don't go to God with your complaining list. Don't start your prayer time like that. I need this. I didn't need that. God's not Santa Claus. When you start your prayer time, don't start with murmuring and complaining. Start by thanking God for everything that he's done for you. Well, pastor, I really don't have anything to be thankful for. Well, then you're not saved. Why don't you start by thanking him that he gave you another day? Thank him that you can walk and that you can breathe and that you can see. Come on, somebody. Thank him for life. Somebody just praise him right now for life. Come on, somebody praise him. We take so many things for granted. These things are the gifts from God. They're gifts from God. Our health is a gift from God. Thank God right now, everyone, wherever you are, thank God for your health. Praise him that you can breathe. Come on, somebody. There are people in hospitals tonight on ventilators and hooked up to all types of machines that wish they could breathe on their own. Somebody take five seconds with your breath, with your lips, with your tongue, and glorify your God right now. Come on. You don't change things in your life. You can't change things in your life. We can't change things in America until we hit the third dimension. Warfare. Warfare. Let's declare the word of God. A declaration. Declaring the word of God. Something that you declare that is based on the Bible. Based on the word of God. A proclamation. A decree. It's not what you want. It's not what you will. This is what God wills. There is awesome power in the word of God. There is life transforming power. Can I get a witness from somebody in the word of God? And you activate the words of this book. See, this is where I lose most people, especially those that have been around a while. They, 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 be, they become so systematic. They miss it because they've not really gone to the next level of revelation. You activate the word of God by the words you say. You activate the blessings of God by the words you say. It's more than praying an hour and reading an hour every day. You've got to discipline your tongue to get in agreement with the will of God, which is the word of God. And when you know the word of God and you apply the word of God, you're in the will of God. Let's take financial breakthrough or financial provision. When you come to God in prayer, you need to say, Lord, I come to you in the name of the Lord. I come to you in the name of Jesus, who is the intercessor, my God, my intercessor in heaven. And based on the authority of your word, I make a declaration concerning my finances. Your word declares that it is the Lord thy God, Deuteronomy 8.18, that has given me the ability to acquire wealth. Or Third John that says, Beloved, I pray above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health as your soul prospers. Say amen, somebody. You've got to get in agreement with God. If there's anything else that you, if there's anything that you'll remember, then leave, take away from this tonight. You've got to discipline your mouth to get in agreement with the word of God. The word says, Lord, I declare your word says, lay up myself treasures, lay up for myself treasure in heaven, my God. And God, I thank you because I am your child that I can expect your blessings, prosperity, peace, protection, provision. Somebody give God praise. When you go to God, you need to say, God, your children 
in history have always been wealthy. Abraham was wealthy. David was wealthy. Solomon was wealthy. And I'm asking you, I believe and I use my faith and I'm expecting that I will be wealthy. I will be prosperous. Not to hoard it, but that I can help other people. So open the windows of heaven over my life. Pour out your blessing. Open the windows and pour out a blessing that I will not be able to contain it. Somebody shout amen. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you. Says you're preaching good, brother. Good, thank you. Hallelujah. Somebody appreciates it. Glory to God. God will turn heaven upside down if he has to, to bless you. So many times people have asked this question. Pastor, how did you get to where you are? By praying. I don't take credit. God's done everything. By praying. By staying humble before God. Now, humility is not weakness. Humility is meekness. Somebody said, well, people are humble because they drive a car that's broken down. That's not humility. That's not humility. That's stupidity. Oh, this person's humble. Humility is not by the things you, because of the things you have. Humility is a spirit that you possess. Humble people bless people. Humble people give all glory and praise back to God. Humble people do not take credit for the things that God has done. Humble people serve people because they know a Savior gave them everything. I promise you, you want God to answer your prayer? Keep asking. Keep seeking. Keep knocking. Keep believing. Keep fighting the good fight. Of faith. Somebody give God praise. Hallelujah. Come on, keep praying until the light shatters every darkness. Nothing, 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 nothing is impossible to them that believe and those that are called according to God's purpose. If you are called to God's purpose and you know all things are working together for good and you know God answers prayer, give Him praise right now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. I feel the anointing being activated. The anointing is being released. The anointing is on the way to people tonight. What you're seeking for is about to happen. What you've been praying for, it's about to happen. Because I serve the God that never fails. Never. Never. You hear people testify sometimes. If you listen carefully, if you listen to some of them, You would think that God failed. God never fails. You've got to keep on believing God answers prayer. You've got to keep on believing God answers prayer. If you want to see God move, you have to move. You have to move. When the Israelites were on the verge of entering the promised land, after 40 years they suffered and struggled in the wilderness. God, prom- God promised and he spoke to him. He commanded, he commanded the priest to take a step out into the water. You need to read it in Joshua chapter 3. The Bible says, when you reach the banks of the Jordan, when you reach the bank of the Jordan River, take a few steps into the river and the waters will part. And you'll walk across on dry ground. Everybody say on dry ground. They're walking through a river. On dry ground. How many of you know that's a miracle? Now at flood time, it was approximately 200 feet from the bank to the other bank and deep in the middle. But what was required of them first, that they had to put their feet in the water. The problem with many American Christians, you've lived all of your life on the east bank of the Jordan on the sun, on dry sand. But right across that bank, is everything you've ever wanted. There's the promised land. It's what God has promised you. The thing you've been praying and asking and expecting God to do, it's right over there. But as long as you stand on this side of the Jordan, as long as you stay on the bank saying, God, why won't you do something? God is talking back to you. He's saying, you got to move. 
you got to take a step of faith out into the water. you got to put your foot out and walk out on the water and start walking. Tell somebody, start walking. See, there's a lot of people in this room, they have great promises. There are people watching me tonight, you have tremendous potential. But until you move, nothing will happen. Nothing. Nothing. God will supernaturally divide the water. But you, and you will walk across on dry ground and you will reach your full potential and you will see the promised land. You will break through because nothing is impossible to God, but you got to move. See, everybody puts it on God. God do this. God do that. God will never do the impossible as long as you're unwilling to do the difficult. Who believes who believes God is able in this place right now? Give him praise right now. Somebody give God a mighty shout right now. Somebody bless the Lord right now. Somebody glorify God. Hallelujah. Many of you have come so close to what God wants to give you, but you've never been able to put your foot in that water. That's a word for someone. The power of prayer begins with, everybody shout, persistence. Consider the persistence of the woman. In Luke chapter 18, my father-in-law likes this story. The, the woman and the unjust judge in Luke 18. The story that Jesus told in Luke 18. Jesus said at the beginning of that, men ought always to pray and never give up. Everybody shout, I'll never give up. The Bible says, the Bible says, Julie, that there was a corrupt judge in that city. In that city, there was a corrupt judge. Thank you, Gina. I believe that maybe it was Washington, D.C. I don't know. But in that story, Jesus said that there was a corrupt judge. There was a widow in that city. Maybe it was Joe Biden. I don't know. <laughs> was asking for justice. The woman said, I want justice from the unjust judge. I want justice from my adversary. But the corrupt judge refused, refused her request. But after she kept coming, she kept coming, she kept praying, she kept believing. Come on. She didn't just come once. She didn't come twice. She didn't come three times. Are you awake in this place? She kept coming and coming and coming. But my God, my God, she refused to give up. Are you listening to me? She kept on coming. She kept, you see, you got to keep on coming to God. You can't quit after you ask the first time. You gotta ask and keep on asking. You gotta seek and keep on seeking. You gotta keep on knocking. Somebody give God praise right now. Finally, the judge had it. He was he said, This woman is driving me nuts. And he gave her exactly what she wanted. Why did he give her exactly what she wanted? She was persistent. Everybody here? There are times when your prayer must be persistent. If your prayers, if you're not persistent in prayer, you will never prevail. Let me say that again. If you do not learn to be persistent in prayer, you will not prevail. Persistent prayer. See, God wants to hear you pray. You don't have to be a preacher. You don't have to be Benny Hinn. You don't have to be a famous evangelist. But look at the Bible. Look at your Bible. You don't have to be religious. Jesus honored the prostitute who crashed the party at the Pharisee's house to anoint his feet. Think about that. Think about that. A prostitute. Think about it. Think about how Jesus saw a tax collector in the tree. The IRS was hanging out watching him. Yeah, who's, uh, Jesus like, the IRS is here. Everywhere I go, I can't get away from the IRS. <laughs> Jesus said, Zacchaeus, come down. We're going to lunch at your house. Then there were four friends who had a friend that was paralyzed. He was sick. And went to the place where Jesus was. The crowd grew so great to such a magnitude, there was no way in the house. The doors were blocked. The windows were filled with people. No way in. They couldn't get in. 
So they climbed up on the roof. They raised the man up with a rope. They hoisted him on the roof. They tore a hole in the roof and let him down to Jesus. Everybody say, that's persistence. See, God still honors persistent, bold, radical prayer. Somebody shout amen. amen. Bold prayer. Bold prayers. God loves bold prayers. God honors bold faith. I'm talking about almighty God, almighty God. Somebody shout amen. amen. Elijah prayed. And fire came down from heaven. Daniel prayed. And God turned lions into pet cats. The three Hebrew children in the fiery furnace, they prayed. And the fourth man showed up, Jesus. Somebody shout amen. amen. He's still with us tonight, no matter what we go through. He'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us. He'll be with, all, with us always, the Bible says, unto the end of the world. Somebody give God praise that you're never alone. Somebody bless God that he's with you in your trouble. He's with you in your affliction. He's with you through every crisis. Somebody give God praise right now. The Bible says when the three Hebrew boys came out of the fire, they didn't even smell like smoke. Isn't that awesome? They did not bend. They did not bow, they did not compromise, and they did not burn. Shout amen. amen. Why? Because God answers prayer. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So I want to encourage you tonight. Keep on believing. Because prayer will always bear fruit. Prayer is like a seed you plant in the ground. There will always come a harvest. And it doesn't come the way you planted it. It always comes back multiplied. Have you ever noticed just a little bit of prayer can move some major mountains in your life? Somebody shout amen. amen. Think about that. Think about all that God has done for you. Think about how God has brought you out of so much. See, when God gives you a vision, he'll give you provision. Most of us, we don't get what we want because many do not know what they want. Most people do not pray specific prayers. When you go to God in prayer, be specific. Everybody say, I will be specific. I could say that three times. Learn to be specific in prayer. When God answers your prayer, then you'll know that it wasn't a coincidence because you were specific. You say, Pastor, I'm the only one saved in my family. That's all God needs. He just needs one. Look at the story of Nehemiah. He fasted and he prayed. Say that with me. He fasted and he prayed. See, the month of January, at Jesus says, Lord, we're getting ready for our yearly annual prayer and fasting. Nehemiah, he fasted and he prayed. He was captive. He was in a foreign country. He waited on the king. Are you listening to me? And he started by prayer and by confessing his sins. Daniel prayed and fasted, confessing his sins. He fasted three meals a day, and he prayed three times a day. Are you with me? Starting off by confessing his sins. He asked God to remember the covenant of his people. He said, you have promised us a land, Jeremiah, but now we're captive in the land. But I want you to go to Jerusalem and rebuild the walls. He was on. Everybody shout, he was on assignment. I want you to go to Jerusalem and rebuild the walls. So he walked into the king's presence and he said, the walls of Jerusalem had fallen down and I want to be the one that rebuilds them. Now those walls have been fallen down for hundreds of years. Those stones were weighed thousands and thousands of tons. It was a massive assignment to accomplish. And the king was wicked. The king was pagan. You wouldn't think he would do anything. But the king gave him the wood and the king gave him the manpower. He gave him the money and he gave him the letters of authority to do the impossible. And the results were, my God, I'm getting ready to shout. Fifty days later, the walls of Jerusalem were rebuilt. Come on, somebody. Because he was persistent. 
Zion. Our king is the king of the Jews, the king of kings, and he is the Lord of lords. He has given us 66 books of authority, 66 books. Read it, 39 books in the Old Testament, 27 books in the New Testament. He has said, call upon me, and I will answer you in prayer and show you great and mighty things that you know not. Somebody give God praise. Somebody thank God that you have power with God in prayer. Glory to God. God wants you and I in prayer to rebuild the fallen walls of America. The fallen walls of family. The fallen walls across the kingdom of God. If we pray, I believe God will move heaven and earth because God always answers prayer. Some of you, some of you need to get honest in this room. Some of you online need to be honest with yourself. Your prayer life is not where it's supposed to be. It's not where it's supposed to be. You know it. You're, be honest. If the church learned how to pray, we would shape this nation. If the church really knew how to pray, we would shape this nation for God. Somebody bless the Lord. Daniel sent us an email and said, please pray for a breakthrough in my life. Patricia Kelly said, please pray for a good doctor's report for my daughter. Also salvation and healing for my brother-in-law, Bobby. So we're going to pray for these. Michael said, please pray for a pastor's wife. She's undergoing a 10-hour surgery to remove cancer from her body on November 17th. Can everyone stand with me, please? Thank you. Thank you, every one of you that are online. Thank you for staying with me. I want to pray for you, too. Can we lift our voice and tongues? Can we pray in the spirit? Father, tonight we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, that your word cannot, will not, shall not ever fail. It will not return void. Lord, I believe in the prayer of faith tonight. You said if there's any sick among us, let us call for the elders of the church. And let us pray over them, anointing with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith. You said would save the sick. And that you would raise us up by your mighty hand. Lord, I'm asking you right now for this pastor's wife that's undergoing a 10-hour procedure to remove cancer from her body on November 17th. Lord, I'm asking you for a miracle that she will not need the surgery. There's nothing impossible for you, God. There's nothing you can't do. The only thing you can't do is fail us. Lord, we believe you now. Lord, we believe in you for Patricia Kelly tonight, for her, do her daughter, Lord, that she goes back to the doctor for the report. We thank you for a good report. I thank you that every prayer request is turning into a praise report tonight. Thank you for salvation and healing in Jesus' name. For her brother-in-law, Bobby, God, heal him now by your mighty power. Touch them with your healing hand. For Daniel, God, for a breakthrough in his life. In Jesus' name, we thank you for it. We give you the glory for healing. We give you the praise for the covenant we have with you. And God, now we pray for America. Lord, that you would make people get back to prayer, God. That you would put people in situations that they would be forced to pray again. Lord, I'm asking you, God, to move mightily on your people. Lord, upon the people of this great church, Jesus is Lord. That you'd move upon every life. That you'd move upon every person. Every mother and father would pray for their children. Children would pray for their parents. And families would pray together like never before. Lord, you said righteousness exalts a nation. But sin brings a reproach. Lord, I thank you that righteous are going to be in authority. We pray this week that righteous people would be placed in authority. People in political power would rule in righteousness. We thank you for righteousness. Righteousness would reign in America. Righteousness would reign in America. Let righteousness reign in government. We thank you right now that the ungodly and the wicked, 
and those that are scheming, those that are in political positions. Lord, you said you, you raise up. You raise up kings and you remove kings. We thank you for promotion of the godly, promotion of the righteous. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord, we thank you tonight that you hear our cry. We don't pray passively. We pray persistently. We thank you right now, God. We pray right now in Jesus' name. We glorify you for every healing, for every miracle. Lord, we're asking you for testimonies from tonight. Testimonies. I pray for everybody online now, on Facebook, on YouTube, on Instagram. God, you touch people across the world. Touch people in America. Touch people in China. Touch people in Hawaii. Touch people in Australia, New Zealand. Touch people in Brazil tonight. Touch people in India. Touch Haitians tonight in Haiti. Touch people across the islands of the sea. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray for America. We pray that there'd be a mighty earth-shaking, heaven-sent, my God, revival that will send shockwaves into the kingdom of darkness. We thank you for the greatest awakening, the greatest spiritual awakening. Let it happen. Let it happen, God. Lord, open hearts, open eyes, open ears, God. Let scales fall from eyes. Let ears be open to the truth of your word. We thank you for it, God. We lift our hands now. We lift our hands. We lift our voices. We praise you for all that you've done. We praise you for that which you're now doing. Everybody shout for what's about to happen. Everybody shout for what's about to happen. Those online, be healed. Be set free. Be restored. Online, I send encouragement to you. I pray that this word has strength in your heart. Many of you say every week, those that watch, say I'm so blessed by your preaching. I'm inspired. I'm empowered. That's what this is all about. To empower your faith. To empower your faith. Starve all your doubts to death so that you can become all that God has called and created you to be. Now, I'm going to ask every one of you that are here, those online, you can give something to support the work of God, to support what we do. We need you to do what God has called us to do. I'm going to ask everyone, do not click off. Do not just shut it off on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. But there's a link right there. There's a way that everyone can give. Every seed is significant. If you're blessed, I say this all the time, blessed people invest back into the gospel. Everybody here, don't just take it for granted. This is your church and you just came. to some, No, invest. There's no harvest without a seed. Everyone online, do it on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, all the ways to give. Be sure to share this live if you haven't done so. Go back and watch it again. Replay it and play it and play it till it gets in your spirit. Because once it gets in your spirit, no devil can rob it. No devil can steal it. You won't miss what God has for you. That's what I love about social media. People can go back and replay and listen again to the word of God. Be sure to follow us. Pastor Kevin McGinnis, YouTube, Jesus is Lord Church, YouTube, Jesus is Lord Church. We have a free app. Go download it. I'm Pastor Kevin, live in New York. Somebody give God praise in this room. Clap your hands and bless God. Thank you for joining me. Until next time, be empowered.